that's a little bit more uh, a little bit more loose by nature. Like with Lucina, you know you're gonna get Marth. You're intentionally looking for some more varied types of setups off of these sour spots into the tippers as well as grab follow-ups if they are available, and that's exactly what Mono went for. And I like that set of the tone opening the set. Uh, I think if you have a sortie, or if you have any characters, grabbing is absolutely important, and C is doing, the, doing their damnedest to not get grabbed after such an opening from Mono, and at that stop, absolutely even. Already. What an opening. Ooh, Just... Great uh, platform movement using those teleport cancels. Mono going for one of those shield breakers again, like we saw earlier. All right, but the Nair train just keeps on coming, and um, Mono just hasn't really found his footing quite yet. All right, getting Palutena at ledge here, but just the momentum just keeps coming for C right now. Yeah, it's what happens when you have a character that can be so blisteringly fast, this airspeed weaving back and forth, watching Mono commit to two, some more stagnant ledge traps, and C just was never there. Oh, the dash in on that grab in order to push Mono off, looking for the Ooh. neutral air, but not getting the interaction with the Dolphin Slash they would like. Right, great spacing by Mono, uh, just hugging that uh, inner side of the stage right there. Oh, just barely mistimed the uh, last hit of the Dancing Blade. Uh, you know, that's something that Marth players like to do a lot, is they uh, just uh, delay those last couple hits of the Dancing Blade to try and get those tipper sweet spots. Um, but, I mean, Mono really needs to be looking for... Uh, kill right now. Yeah. Didn't see to those red percents, but he's on those red percents himself. There we go. Great call out on the uh, jump from ledge. Yeah, these nares that Mono has been throwing out, and some of these buttons that they're trying to use, they're drifting a little bit too far in with some of these as they continue to hold left straight into the blast zone. Okay. <laughs> the uh, Some of these buttons that you're usually expecting uh, players with disjoints like Marth to utilize as bait in order to find grabs and to find follow-ups. Mono's just drifting a little bit too far in, not respecting the amount of space that Palutena can command. And C has been taking that and so much more. Right, right. Maybe committing just a little bit too much, putting a little bit too much faith into those initial hitboxes instead of using them for those setups like you were talking about. Catching the drift, the attempted drift back to ledge, but Mono isn't down, isn't out of it just yet as that grab comes out from C in a just such a dominant performance Ooh. thus far. Missing the explosive flame uh, part two, but looking to that was such a good <laughs> shield poke <laughs> by C. This this dude, this lad, this absolute unit. Let's watch that. Let's let's check that out. That let's check that out even beautiful. on half speed. Why don't we? Watching C back and forth. You want the back air. You're expecting the back air. Mono looks for the parry. And then because that flash shield, because that flash shield is, I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind it a little bit. So they're moving. They're moving here. The flash of that shield lets C realize, oh, Mono's looking for a parry. Time to go in with this multi-hit. Yeah, and it just barely like caught the top of Marth's haircut. Yeah. And it, Got not only that, the, uh, the shield poke or the drop shield would have been there for C. They committed to that idea, and in such a le leading position, they had the the risk. They had the willing the uh, the, the slack. That's the word. Right. The slack to go for a, an option like that. All right. Good tech by Mono right there. All right. Trying to find his way back into center stage, but C just not letting him have any space at all right now. Oh, going a little bit too early on the jump call out, and Mono makes the most out of that opportunity, getting so much damage off these tippers and the grab. Still committing to that game plan is Mono, not trying to betray any of their own style, nor let's see overwhelm them and force them into just a button mashy op uh, type of game plan because Marth can't keep up with in styles like that. Right, right, right. On the off stage again, great weight on the uh, on the jump and up there. All right, now getting C off stage. C is able to use that teleport to get to ledge nice and easy. Now we've got a juggle situation, but C just fighting their way down with the uh, the neutral air. Yeah, using that neutral air more, more and more as a drag down tool later in these percents, which has been very, very, uh, very, very potent 
part, for the part of C, just allowing for extensions when you don't usually find them as Palutena at these percents. They're a stray hit monster, and these back throws uh, are a part of that. I would I would assume looking for yet another grab, but not finding it. The percents getting very dangerously high for both players at 120 at the ledge here. C is almost not looking to play too far out of the corner and pretend to get a grab. No, not good quite. Looks a flame to allow them back to stage, trying to put their back to the ledge, but instead just run up, find that grab. Another great early up B by Mono right there. Such a good pulse on um, on C's edge guarding attempts. Swiping F to Sour, F to into Sweet, into a tipper down tilt. That was pretty nice setup coming out from Mono, who was looking for those proper spacing off of all these short hops. Avoiding the explosive flame, knows, uh, sees ways to get back to ledge, and is just letting Palo uh, C recover to ledge every single time, not looking to challenge that. Instead, looking for the follow-up afterwards. As C has had some tr uh, some trouble and some unwillingness to leave the corner, and that's made, uh, let them let Mono have uh, garner up this lead that they have uh, currently. Right, and just like you said, once again, the explosive flame into teleporting into ledge. All right. And Mono has been getting some absolutely amazing extra credit right now, already getting C to 100% before losing his first stock. This is, you know, such a different story from game one. How the Dolphin Slash just scoop away. This is, yeah, completely different from how game one operates. That's the dash attack burst option, powering right through Mono's ledge, ledge trap, which functioned the heart and soul of it was that F tilt right there. Most of the time when Mono would commit to a short hop, it would be to a very low committal button and then trying to cover the approach with exactly these F tilts. It's a, it's a tool that they have been hit confirming off of uh, or hit confirming into as well as using just to stuff any and all approaches coming out from C, forcing the game into the snail's pace that we're watching, which every, in which every single interaction is headed into Mono's favor. Just, what a complete tale of uh, change of scenery that we're seeing from in this game, too. Absolutely, but now see starting to find their legs a little bit. Starting to see some signs of life back throw, throwing Mono off stage. Just waiting to look for the ledge trap, but just not finding it. Looking for the platform tech chase as a very well-timed air dodge gets Mono out of that dangerous situation. Let's go, Black Sheep, with the subscription. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks. Mono looking to try and close out this stock, not wanting to suffer from too much Marthritis as we get into the final stages of this game. Yet again, hunting for some of these forward tilts as the Dolphin Slash does come out, not taking the stock. Tipper one, but not tipper two. Oh, there we go. The F tilt catching uh, C trying to come in with the forward air. Forward tilt. As we see Noku watching their boy, watching C looking to see if they're able to get out of this best of three set. But forward tilt from Mono was the MVP just covering yep. all of this space, whether it be on neutral air, whether it be on, uh, whether it be off of the back air as we saw before. Marth coming down with a land, coming down, landing, and Mono knows that C is wanting to get aggressive. Every single time they tried to approach and every single time they ate a F tilt, tipper or otherwise. They have, and looks like we are going to be seeing small battlefield as C's counter pick of choice for this game three. Not looking to get uh, trapped on that top battlefield platform. Um. Yeah, we'll see how much the open space really ends up making a difference because while it did uh, it wonders on Pokemon Stadium two, on a stage like uh, small battlefield where it, the distance is the same, you're just removing a tall platform, you are allowed to make plays like that and not have to worry about a potential air dodge into a safe vertical position. C was right there for the catch and closed out the stock and cementing the lead that they had gained early on. Right, just making sure that, you know, Mono doesn't have anywhere to go in those Palutena up air juggle situations. It's such a good active hitbox. Oh, yeah, it is. So it, of all the things that they touch with Palutena, that up air has stayed true and has stayed as potent as needed. So much so that you're seeing Mono try to come down with fastballs to avoid the uh, juggling position they were in and see punished accordingly. 
we're, we're watching these two players make inferences at each other. It's just nuts. <laughs> I know. The, the level of adaptation that you see, even just in winner's quarters, is really incredible. Yeah, I mean, both of these had to make some pretty crazy runs, uh, pretty crazy early runs thus far. A Terra Boy, no slouch, of course, for C and L Ray Start, a player absolutely on the rise. Meanwhile, Mono taking over Booty, who has had their own fair share of upset potential at a win on John Numbers at the uh, Dino two weeks ago, and has continued to be a presence. Both these players absolutely have earned their medal to be in this winner's quarter set, and Mono has earned their survivability medal as well, sticking at 151 and forcing C to earn this stock as they try to get this first one <laughs> off of C in forward tilt three times in a row. An amazing button, but Sour Spot isn't going to take the stock anytime soon. Back throw looking for some more ledge trapping. That's, uh, you know, Mono's been getting a lot out of the ledge trapping this set. And, you know, like you said, the forward tilt's coming in through. But C this time not going in with an aerial, going in with that uh, dash attack with the invincibility to get himself through those forward tilts. But Dolphin Slash taking C's first stock finally. And it's all about cadence with these two and how willing are they to press buttons and try to break through. As of this game, Mono has really been, I like the idea of that air dodge up, but it didn't uh, really amount to anything. And in fact, it's just led them into this Palutena Vortex for a solid 32%. And perhaps even climbing the corner, using this corner to great advantage is C. The parry as well on the rising aerial. All right, good back air. Oh, okay. Ooh, that was for, oh. a bold F smash. Understandable. They wanted to see that jump from oh. ledge, and they could. If they weren't going to give it up, then they'll bait it out of them anyway. The early recovery. You mentioned those early recoveries in last game being so, uh, being so good for Mono, able to avoid some deeper edge guard attempts. Yeah. And, and look C. right there. C came down uh, from the ledge, looking to pretend that they were going to do a neutral air, getting Mono to do that early uppy, and C was just able to punish with the biggest hitbox he could think of. You know, I always think of fighting games, and I always think a lot of competitive environments, as a game of circles, uh, mm -hmm. Powhatan and neutral air notwithstanding. <laughs> the circle, the circular nature of a matchup like this really is indignified on ledge, as I'm going to pause right about here. Mono is using this position, this, because they know that, they know that uh, C is always going to be standing up right about here. So they're using this as a rising fair, uh, rising button into a landing option into covering with a dash back or usually a standing forward tilt. This loop that they're able to establish, as I will draw this circle a couple times over, this loop that they're able to establish, it can be very tough to, to get out of and to get around because it's built on a disjoint. It's built on a floaty disjoint, in fact. Mm -hmm. But C played smart. And while in this instance, they lose the stock. Oh, this instance, no, they take the stock mm -hmm. because they played smart and acknowledge that their character has more tools than just than to just accept what is coming to them. Sometimes they did. They let a mono press buttons. And sometimes they powered right through them. Right. And I mean, especially with a move like Palutena Dash Attack, having that uh, invincibility hitbox on it certainly helped that... Uh, that situation. Certainly a little bit of privilege <laughs> for, oh, yeah. for the goddess <laughs> of light. And hey, top tiers are top tiers. Yeah. And that's you just, know, just happens. I feel like she's kind of <laughs> fallen by the wayside a little bit. You what don't best. hear about Palutena that's quite as that's much as you do other top tiers these days. But I mean, she's still up there. Oh, yeah. She's oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like Palutena feels so solved sometimes, mm -hmm. both as a metagame and as a counterplay. Like, Playing against ba these Palutena players, you can know what to avoid. You know what to di how to di to make Palutena really work for her stocks. But at the end of the day, she still has her speed. She still yeah. has that back air and that dash attack up air for uh, potentially early stocks off juggling mm -hmm. and some really strong ledge trapping. Like as long as you're able to move effectively, Palutena does reward that. Mm -hmm. Speaking of movement, oh boy, we have got.